So when I first left the OCD program, I was 15 and believe it or not, I thought I knew everything. And so I left feeling a little bit better. And so really I had this mentality of like, oh, I figured this out. I can go live my life now. And unfortunately, when you don't keep up with OCD treatment and you want to just live your life, it catches back up with you. And so in a couple of years, I was about 17, I relapsed and I was really struggling. I went back to inpatient treatment at that time. And honestly, I didn't see the same results. I Treatment was the same. Treatment hadn't changed. My OCD symptoms hadn't really changed, although they had morphed. But the difference was my motivation. I was feeling really unmotivated. I really didn't want to do the work. I was struggling with the why. Why do I have this illness? Why do I have to go through this? Like, I've already done treatment once. If I'm always going to have to do this treatment, why would I want to, you know, keep having to put forth so much work if I'm always going to be plagued with these thoughts? And, and so I left treatment, really didn't have this, like, significant progress like I did the first time. And what happened is I slowly started to identify things I wanted in my life right? Uh, going to college, uh, you know, living independently, living away from my parents, like these goals that OCD held me back from. And that's when I really realized to meet those and to get there, I have to figure out how to manage my symptoms and I have to figure out how to do it in a healthy way, right? It doesn't mean I get rid of them tomorrow because that wasn't feasible, but it was about making treatment and management a part of my everyday life. And I'll tell you, you know, I'm, it's well over 17 years later, I'm still trying to figure it out. Um, there is no black and white formula. You know, sometimes I'm going to therapy once a week and I'm still really, really struggling. Sometimes I'm doing well and I'm going once or twice a month and I'm doing really great and my OCD is kind of at bay and pretty. And so I, I always say like I'm one trigger away from being back in a program and I'm like one good day away from barely having symptoms, right? Because that's just how OCD is. It waxes and wanes. And so for me, treatment's a part of everyday life. From the second I wake up in the morning until I go to sleep, I'm doing ERP. Some days I'm struggling more than others and that's my life. But for me, being able to hold a job, be in a relationship, have friendships, like that's success for me. And I know that it doesn't come easy, right? You always are gonna have good and bad days, but I also know that we can manage our symptoms and live a successful life. So after um, I left the OCD program, I went right into high school and I was seeing a psychiatrist, not there, not a therapist working on exposure therapy and everything. Because again, when I left, I thought, you know, I didn't need that anymore. I'm good. You know, I thought I could have left way um, sooner um, than I did. So I was continuously on medication, though. So, but I also found um, running. And I think that gave me kind of another focus in life because I didn't know how well I was at it until my first track meet in freshman year when I broke the two mile and mile record. And the coach came up to me and said, you can be a collegiate runner, but you gotta, you know, put all, all your, you gotta put all your energy into it and really focus. And so I was like, okay. And, you know, I fell in love with it. And I was like, you know, I want, I want you know, I love ath athletics. So I want to do that. So that kind of put me in a, a, another zone, I guess. And so, yes, I still struggled, struggled with symptoms, but it wasn't as, it, didn't affect me as much. I enjoyed my high school years. And then when I got to college, I was a walk on at the LS on the LSU cross country and track team. And I actually did okay during college. Um, like I said, the end of my college years was a, a little more stressful and they started coming back a little bit, but not as intense. It really started coming back the last three years when I have been on this high level of competition and you know i'm so like my goal is to make it to the olympics and so i don't know if the stress of that is what caused it but it came back really bad and to where uh way different than when i when it was when i was 12. i, I absolutely had no control over it and it was affecting a lot of things in my life like i said sleep recovery times with my friends and it started to scare me to where i was like oh my god if this continues down this road i don't think i can make it to the olympics and that's, I put all the past eight years of my life into this. And if my OCD takes me away from that, I don't know what to do. So around January or the beginning of February last year, where I um, felt totally out of control. I was like, I need help. I want to put myself into inpatient treatment because I felt like that was the only route at that moment. And I actually called Liz um, to help me get into Houston OCD. And she got me in right away because I only had a really short time to like focus on that before I had to 
get back on the wagon to the journey to the Olympics. And luckily she got me in very quickly and thank God I um, got in and I was more, you know, ex accepting of the exposure therapy and I was like, I hated it like we all do, yeah. but I was like, okay, this is anything, this is going to work because nothing else has worked and, and I have to believe in it. So it was very hard at me at first to get back into like doing it, but at the end of treatment, I definitely had made a step in putting, you know, just putting all of, all into the exposure therapy and not letting my OCD take away from it. and. Luckily, it allowed, I got to get out and got to um, get to the Pan Ams, win silver, and right now I'm on a great track. I've made the 2020 Olympic team, and I've got one more qualification process, and if I didn't go back to treatment, I probably wouldn't be where I am right now. And I think that's really the key, right? I think what Jenny and I are here to talk about is, like, neither of us are sitting here living a successful a uh, fulfilling life because we got treatment once and we were cured, right? Treatment is ongoing and it's something that you have to continue to do. And I think the really like, I always call it the mental maturity, right? But the emotional maturity and intelligence of Jenny to know, like I have a short period of time. I could choose to just kind of take a break and see what happens or I can like jump right back into treatment and get this under control is the best decision that any of us can make. And it's hard, it's a hard decision, it's a scary decision. But the reality is, is that if we can choose treatment, that really means we get to choose management and we get to choose the life that we want. But I think both of us know, the more we neglect treatment or push it down, and we've all done it and we do it frequently because it's hard work, like treatment's not fun. And um, we do know that that's when OCD will come back and it comes back so strong. And I think Jenny's a living testament to the fact that if you put treatment first, those other goals that you're working towards, you get to achieve. And I just want to say congratulations. Thank I'm you. so proud of you. Thank you. So I'm currently the director of the Houston OCD program right here in Houston. We're a residential support, intensive outpatient and outpatient program. And it's actually the exact program that Jenny and I were in when we were young. So for me, it's, it's kind of serendipitous. It's kind of um, full circle and still something I haven't like totally really realize that I'm doing it, but I, I went from patient to director and at this point I get to oversee our clinical work, our operations, and really every day I get to go to work making the impact I hope on other people's lives that was made on mine. And so that's where I am. I'm excited to be there and I think this is really where I'm meant to be. I of course also run my nonprofit foundation, the Peace of Mind Foundation, which is something that really we, we pour our heart and souls into advocacy, education, and support and resources for people with OCD. For me, after our treatment stay, when we were just 15, I really, I was so grateful for the opportunity. I might've been mad that my parents first sent me there, but afterwards I was really grateful. But I simultaneously was really kind of mad or angry that so many people wouldn't get that same option because of finances and so many different reasons that access to appropriate mental health care is just not there. It's not where it needs to be. and so. Really, my life mission is to make a difference in the lives of people with OCD and to help them get the treatment they need because the reality is is that Ginny and I don't sit before you as an exception to the rule or as this like unique picture. Really, our stories should be the norm. You can experience difficulties, live and really battle OCD, but still have a successful, fulfilling life. Right now, I am currently living at the Olympic Training Center in Colorado Springs. I lived there, I moved there at the end of 2015 after I won the Olympic trials for the 2016 Olympics. And I unfortunately didn't get to compete in Rio because there was another uh, qualification process that I did not make, but I decided to go for another Olympics. So I stayed in Colorado to train. The past three years I've been dedicating on getting more experience and getting me more on that world stage and recognition. And I am currently now number three in the world and have held my number one spot in USA for the past oh, four or five years. So I just, like I said, I just made the team now for 2020 and I have that one more qualification process that I did not make in 2016. So that is what I'm doing right now. I'm about to go back there and get prepared for that uh, tournament. The thing about my boxing and my goal to get to the Olympics, everybody says, how do you box when you have this contamination OCD fear? And I, and I tell everybody, actually, it helps me stay on track with life. It gives me a purpose. 
it, I always say boxing is my therapy because if I didn't have boxing, then my, I feel like my OCD would be out of control and control my life. So if anything, it, it doesn't affect my, or I won't even let it. If it does in any way, I'll be like, no, I'm not going to let this take away my goal and my dream. I've been working so hard for this. And when it has, like it kind of did last year, I was like, okay, I, I'm not going to continue this route. I'm just going to go ahead and go back to treatment and get help for it because I'm not going to let this ruin my dream of getting a gold medal at the Olympics. So, you know, like Liz said, we have to continue um, treatment every day. It's, it's an everyday process, whether, you know, we're seeing someone to help us do it or we wake up every day being like, okay, I need to really work on this. Like be strong, you know, pull through this. Don't let your OCD get you trapped. Having done exposure therapy in so long until I went back to Houston OCD last February and I continued doing it since then. And if I didn't, I, I could be in a total different position right now. And I think even, you know, I'm in my position that I'm in and I do clinical work and research and all this stuff with OCD. And so people's assumption from the outside for both of us is probably like, oh, but look where you are. You don't have OCD anymore. What was it like when you had OCD? And I just, I cringe when I hear that because I'm like, I still have OCD. I still struggle every day. At work, I have triggers. At work, I have anxiety. I push through. I don't let that control my decisions. I don't let that negatively impact my work, but it's still something I deal with. And I think what Jenny and I really want to emphasize and what I think you've probably heard over and over as we've shared our stories is that when you have those goals and those things you're working towards, it's much easier to fight your OCD because there's a reason to fight it, right? I'm not gonna let it take away my Olympic boxing career. I'm not gonna let it take away the work that I wanna do in the field with patients with OCD. And so that is the greatest motivation of all. And I think that so many times we let our OCD or our anxiety, depression, mental health condition define our careers and define where we're gonna go. And that really holds us back, right? Really, we should let our careers define how little our OCD is gonna to get to interfere with them. And that was something big I learned in treatment was, they reminded you every day, what is your value in life? What matters to you? Or like wake up every day thinking about that instead of waking up every day and having your, you know, your OCD thoughts control like your first thing you do in the day. And again, that's what helped me to continue managing it and do what I wanna do with my boxing. Well, I've actually had a few um, athletes that have come to me when I've come out about my OCD and they ask me like, like, how do you, what do you do when you're stuck or anything? And I, and I tell them like, I still struggle with it not, not every day, but you got to remember like, okay, what is, what is important to you that day for your training to get to you, to get to the goal where you want to be? And if you feel trapped, you just got to keep telling yourself that and just walk away from it. Um, so kind of going back to like what has helped me uh, manage it is keep keep that goal in your mind of, of like all these years of training like why you're here at this moment like it, you know don't get trapped in this little OCD world and then you can't do what you want to do so uh, just remember I've been training all these years to get this gold I'm not gonna you know ruin it by not going to training because I'm trapped in my OCD I think for me, my goal for anyone watching this is to really always remember that help and hope are always available. I think that Jenny and I would probably both say when we were first met, when we were 15 and 13, we would have never imagined in a million years this is where we'd be sitting years later. I don't think I thought management of my symptoms was possible, and I certainly didn't think I could have this fulfilling life. I really thought my diagnosis would define me forever. And I hope that our stories are one that just reminds you that it's, it's hard work. It takes a lot of grit, it takes a lot of motivation, and it takes a lot of blood, sweat, and tears, really, to fight OCD. But the reality is, is that you can have a fulfilling life despite this diagnosis. And in turn, you can let the diagnosis or the struggle, you can let something good come out of it. You know, I talk a lot about, for me, my life, it's really about taking pain and turning into, it into a purpose. And I think Jenny, the more she's spoken about OCD, and I've, I've already heard so many people's lives who have been touched and changed forever because of her story, 
it's a reminder to us that although we often want to kind of pretend like that's not part of who we are, there's a chance that we can use the story to help other people. And there's certainly always a chance of management and a chance for you to have that life you once dreamed of. The thing that I feel like people should learn is don't, you know, don't look at OCD as a way to define you, but recognize that you struggle with it because then you can be more comfortable with yourself and not feel like ashamed and hide from people when you are more comfortable with acknowledging that you have an issue and describing to people what it is and having them understand it then it makes you understand it more and how you can cope with it in the right ways so why i've come out with it is to show people like don't don't be embarrassed to ask for help like she said like there's so much help out there and i know some people don't know like where to go or how to find it but there is help and that's what me and liz are trying to um portray and tell people is that we've been in that spot and we've been in that dilemma but you know it's not gonna hold you back you can get what you need and you know have a fulfilling life